Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. It's been a while. It's been a while since it's actually been six days since I have recorded something new. Um, I've been reusing some TikTok things. I've been just, you know, playing around with a bit of music, but now I'm back here with the real podcast and I'm really excited and it really, um, I've really missed it, to, to be honest, because it is just something that I like to do. I like talking about things I care about and, um, well, actually in the hope of sharing something that is important for someone else as well or to someone else as well and not only to me. So, let's see. I think we have, yes, we have gone through the first one and now we're going ahead with chapter two of The Gap and the Gain by Benjamin Hardy and someone else. It should be in the title, period. Chapter two, be self-determined. External reference points make it impossible to feel successful because no matter what you've done, the success criteria are always moving. Getting out of the quote-unquote gap and into the quote-unquote gain means you have made yourself your own reference point. The gap means your life is determined by someone or something external. The gain means you're living a self-determined life. When your reference point is internal, you make the final call on what success means to you, regardless of what other people think. When your reference point is internal, happiness and success are always right here and right now. Journaling questions. What are the reference points you measure yourself against? Why did you choose those particular reference points? How do you define and measure success? I'm sorry. How do you define and measure success for yourself? Are the reference points you measure yourself against external or internal? How often do you compare yourself to others? How much time do you spend on social media? Which, for me, um, for me, it might actually be quite something. Also due to me uploading things. Um, but I otherwise do not actually spend that much time on social media. When I'm spending some time on any platform, it probably is TikTok. Um, I do enjoy it. I do like it. But I would not necessarily say that it is something negative. Um, you might be more prone to comparing yourself to somebody else. You might just see more beautiful people and so on and so forth. More rich people. At least in theory, you know, of course, people are portraying themselves very, very differently on social media than their actual life is in real life, obviously. Um, which is, you know, of course, something to, to keep in mind, of course, something to, to think about and, and never forget. But I would not say that social media per se is bad. Does this question offend me? A tiny bit. <laughs> Are you self-determined and free? Um, period. And then there are some other ones. Are your success criteria focused on the outcomes you currently want? What is a simple filter you can create to assess every decision you make? For example, will, make, uh, will it make the boat go faster? Will it make my life better, easier, more of whatever you want to have? What is one thing you can apply this filter to in the next three hours? Then there is a quote, will this make the boat go faster? This is the story of how one man led the British men's eight rowing team to Olympic gold victory and his winning strategy for achieving more. Then there is a Twitter post. Chapter three, I'm sorry. The compound effect of the gap or gain. Being in the gap creates a negative compound effect in your life, but being in the gain creates a positive compound effect in your life. Which does make sense. Um, gap meaning comparing yourself to somebody else and gain meaning you compare yourself to yourself. Um, this is entirely good because comparing yourself to yourself, um, I would argue makes you prone to thinking, well, um, Yesterday I've actually been a bit better, so I want to do a bit better today. Whatever, um, whatever factor in life this this might be um, be focused on. For some people it might actually be getting more things done, and for some other people it might be getting less things done. 
some people just working so much that they nearly die every single day because they're so burnt out and they're so out of energy. And so for them, for example, it might be a goal to work less and or maybe be more efficient, but this is a bit, um, yeah, just be more efficient. Just do so. It's like, you know, just be happy. When you're depressed, it's basically the same thing. Um, when you're comparing yourself to, to yourself, you see that yesterday might have been better or the day before might have been better. And so you might be a, a bit more motivated to be like, well, I do want to be better again. I do want to get better again. And so you might be um, more quote unquote prone or more motivated to actually do so compared to, well, um, my neighbor is having a bigger car or, or a better car than I'm having. So I should work more like, hmm, it is something external. And it still feels like, at least for me at this point of time, it feels like a bit farther away. When I'm comparing myself to myself, um, it is very close because it is me. But when it is someone else or something else, um, then it's, it's, well, I mean, I can compare myself to Elon Musk and this is just way, 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 um, <laughs> well, it, it's, it's pretty dumb. First of all, and second of all, it's like hundreds and thousands of kilometers in the geographical sense and also in the like, um, you know, maybe let's call it philosophical sense. It is a lot of time, a lot of character, a lot of many things in between us. So it's pretty, I don't want to say dumb, dumb is so, uh, well, it is dumb. Psychologists have found that practicing mental subtraction thinking of the absence of the good things in your life can make you appreciate them more to remind yourself of the gains in your life. Start using the gap and gain language in the following ways. Call yourself out when you catch yourself in a gap. Immediately look for and vocalize the gain. Tell five people you know and love about the gap and the gain. If you choose, get them a copy of this book so they can live more in the gain themselves. That's a nice marketing strategy. Give those five people permission to call you out when you're in a gap. Help others see and appreciate their own gains more by first asking them out about their recent progress and second pointing out to them their progress. It can be very humbling and empowering to have someone recognize your point out, uh, I'm sorry, or point out your progress. Be that person who acknowledges or other people's gains, which is amazing advice I would say. When you're in a difficult situation, help yourself and others find the gain rather than being upset. Um, you could ask, what is the gain in this? Or how can, we can, how can we turn this into a gain? Journaling questions. When was the time you went into the gap because you went from wanting something to believing you needed it? When was the time you went into the gap by comparing yourself to someone else? And when was the time you used gratitude to reframe a situation into a gain and move forward? And with this being said, I'm going to end the episode there. Actually pretty strange. Talking again, it's a bit hard. So I need to do it again every single fucking day in one or the other way. But yeah, going to see you the next time. At least hope. See you.